Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank each and every one of you for tuning in today here via our radio broadcast as well as those who are joined in via uh, the Wisdom app. I want to share some encouraging words with you on today. Don't give up. That's right. Don't give up. Uh, I want you to get up and I want you to try again. And you know what? Um, I am a firm believer that uh, if if doors were open for you that needed to be open, if doors were closed that needed to be closed, if our Father which is in heaven provided you with the tools that you needed, to come out of some circumstances and situations that you found yourself in. If he did it once, he'll do it again. It's not a one-time thing because life is not a one-time thing. And throughout life, we find ourselves in, within situations and within circumstances. And uh, some of them are beyond our control. Some things, uh, it was our fault. And I'm just going to be honest. Sometimes we find ourselves in situations because uh, we did not follow the instructions. We did not follow the plan. And we make mistakes because you know what? No one is perfect. Uh, we grow under uh, unto spiritual maturity, but no one is perfect. And so when we find ourselves in situations, when we find ourselves in, in, in circumstances and, and we can't figure it out and, and we don't know the next move of, of how to come out of those things, uh, it is not over. There is a purpose. There is a plan. Uh, I believe once again that uh, deliverance, a way out it didn't happen just once it could happen again uh, I want to share this with you something that came up in my memories for Facebook it says and I wrote this back in 2017 inventory is more than just keeping track of what's on the shelves it is the understanding of what you thought was in order only to find out it was not and the caption says grow with me Sometimes we think that we have everything mapped out and planned out and and uh, we move ahead prematurely. But I encourage you to get all of the details before proceeding. I didn't say not to proceed. I said to get all of the details. Get a good plan. Know the vision. Get an understanding of the vision, step by step, section by section, move in caution, but yet move in authority, move in caution, but yet move in authority. That authority is your assurance, authority being your confidence that you know exactly what it is that you are doing, you know where you are headed, and you know what you are capable of. I'm reminded today uh, about a second major event, Exodus, that happened with the children of Israel. That's why I say to you, don't give up. There is another opportunity. I don't want you to feel uh, that your last uh, defeat was your final place. Uh, you didn't fail. Uh, the only time we really fail is when we do not try. Uh, and then you haven't measured yourself up against anything. And so to not try, it is an ultimate fail. But anytime you step out and you begin to move uh, and, and you begin to make things happen, it may not happen in your timing or the way you thought it was going to happen. But you did not fail you gain some experience and today I want to tell you that yesterday everything you wanted to do everything you plan to do you might not have had a chance to do all of those things it might not 
it, it, it probably didn't turn out the way you thought it was going to turn out, but that's, that does not mean that you failed. Today, I want you to pick yourself up. It is 1235 in the afternoon here in New Jersey on this June 29th, 2022. And I want you to pick yourself up. I want you to not give up. Do not throw in the towel. But I want you to learn from yesterday. That's right. Learn from yesterday. So review your yesterday. Find out what the goal was and what did not happen so that that goal was met. I believe that every single day we we should have some small attainable goals in place. And as you achieve those goals each and every day, although they might be small, they are part of the bigger picture. So do not beat yourself up over the head. Do not throw in the towel. Do not give up because things just did not happen the way you wanted them to happen on yesterday. Take it as an experience. Review it. And as you are preparing, you should be well into your day. Some things should have already been underway. Uh, A lot of people are are right now at their time of lunch. But if you are an entrepreneur or uh, in leadership for ministry, guess what? Lunch is on the go. Get it how you get it. uh, Unless you have streamlined your schedule. But review your yesterday. The things that caused a huge ripple in your goals and in your plans to get you closer to the bigger picture, I want you to review those things first. I want you to take a look at those things and I want you to make sure that you do not repeat the same errors from yesterday. Find out why they did not fit in what you want it to achieve. That's right. Find out what you want it to do, why it did not fit, and what you want it to achieve. But do not give up. Do not throw in the towel. There is yet more opportunity for you. But you must encourage yourself. Do not be too hard on yourself. We are our toughest critics. We really are. But you can do this, and I know you can. I want to share something with you a few Sundays ago uh, in Sunday school. Yes, I still attend Sunday school. Um, just talking about a uh, the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, about the rebuilding of the temple. And I was reminded that this was another major Exodus for the children of Israel. When they went into Egypt, they went in as a family of about 70 people, and they were given the the area of Goshen. And they grew and they multiplied, but another Pharaoh came into position that did not know the history of why and and he probably didn't care but anyway they they put the people of Israel they made them slaves and they put hard tasks on them which uh, God had already said this to Abraham that his descendants that generation would suffer for 400 years well it came a time Moses came and that was the exodus out of Egypt but there was another exodus and that was when Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon captured and seized the people he left the the poor behind but he took all of the prominent the educated, the princes, the kings. He took the majority of those of wealth. He, he took them over to Babylon and, and they were captive over there. 
but that was not their expected end. There was another opportunity that God sent a deliverer that would say the people can go back to their own land this time. That person was Cyrus. He had written it in a decree. He also made way for the rebuilding. But while they were in exile and, and, and while they were on their way back, this is what I love, they were on their way back They, they uh, for those who decided because it was up to them if they wanted to return back to the promised land. We have an Ezra who sought to learn the ways and the laws of God to live by them himself so that he can teach those who are returning from exile. We also have a Nehemiah who was uh, given permission from the king to go and to instruct the rebuilding of the gates and the outer walls. We have a, 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 Hez uh, a Haggai. We have a Zerubbabel. They were a part of the rebuilding, but what I wanted to bring across for all of us today is there is a good and expected end for you. Every day is not going to be sunshine. There are going to be some rainy days, some cloudy days. There are going to be some days that it is extremely hot, and yet there are the winter times. But do you not know that even in the winter, there are still days that feel like summer. And there are days of summer that feel like days of winter or even spring. But there is a good and expected end for you. The hardship that you might be facing right now is not your end. There is a better there really is. And so one scripture that I absolutely love, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. When I think about that, I think about what goes on in the night. Something happens in the nighttime. The nighttime is a time of meditation. It is a time of, uh, of planning. It is a time of listening. It is a time to get acquainted with the vision. It is a time to rest up because there is so much work ahead of you to do. When I think about the night, I think about Nehemiah. Because, you know, when Nehemiah did go to the place of rebuilding the walls, over in Nehemiah, the second chapter, 15th verse, it says, Then went I up in the night by the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley and so returned. And the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did, neither had I yet told it to the Jews, nor to the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. He did not tell anybody. He kept the things that God had spoken unto him in his heart before it was time to release which was day so weeping may endure for a night but there is something for you to do in the night let's read that again because that, cause that's so good that, that's that's really good and I just want to encourage those who are going through a very hard and difficult time and you are literally thinking about giving up and you are thinking about walking away whether it's in your business whether it's a ministry some in our personal lives you are thinking I cannot do it anymore I'm going to walk away but I'm saying to you 
before you walk away, I need you to understand that there is a good and expected end for you. You did not fail. Now, if you are walking away from something that is hurting and harming you, yes, walk away. Because I'm never going to tell you to stay in a place where you should not be. But if you are walking away from ministry because it seems like the people just aren't getting it or they just don't want to move forward, listen, do not walk away. But stay fast and stay focused on what you were called to do. Complete your assignment. If it's business, because you're going through a slump, listen, that's that's called the night. Regroup, refresh, review, plan, pray, move strategically. Because there's going to be a time that day is going to break forth. You're not always going to be in this time of night. There is something to do in the night. So let's let's read this again because this is good. Nehemiah, the second chapter. I'm going to back up. Let's let's back up to the eleventh verse because I want you to get the fullness of this as I set my pace to encourage you today. It says, So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. And I arose in the night, I and some few men with me, neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. So, you see, in the night, in the night when you are getting the strategic plans and the vision is is, is brought unto you with more clarity and you are getting the instructions and you are resting because there is so much more work for you to do. When God says something to you, it is not meant for you to share it unless he tells you to share it so verse 12 says and i arose in the night see this is why i don't want you to give up weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning and i arose in the night i and some few men with me neither told i any man what god had put what my god had put in my heart to do at jerusalem neither was there any beast with me save the beast that i rode upon Sometimes we share our plans when we're going through the rebuilding, when we're going through the restructuring, and, and not everybody who's hearing those plans is on your side. That's why we have to be careful about who we share with, because there are some who will come and sabotage your plans, or they will try and come and steal an idea that you have. But I want to tell you that when you know that the idea was given strategically to you, I don't care how they try to put it together, it will not have the same effect, because those are your plans. That is your vision. Those are your instructions. So I want you to be careful in the night the night signifies a time of struggle the night signifies a time when listen you don't know the next move and so you must be careful about every move it's the night Verse 13 says, And I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well into the dung port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Then I went on to the gate of the fountain and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass then when i up in the night by the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley and so returned and the rulers knew not whither i went or what i did neither had i as yet told it to the jews nor to the priests, nor to the noble, nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. So he was strategic, uh, not sharing prematurely. Get selfish with your information. 
get selfish with your instructions and your directions until you are released to share it until you get an understanding of what it is you are about to do see here here's what I have found that if I am not sure with what I'm supposed to do if I share it with someone they're going to redirect me because I'm not confident in what what I'm doing I, I it's like I'm seeking to ask their approval and and that's that's not what I, I need to do when I know where my instructions come from when the vision has been made clear unto me I know where I'm headed I am moving in authority I have the confidence within me to complete that which I am instructed to do I'm not looking for somebody else's opinion this is the plan this is the focus. This is the vision. This is the work. I'm not looking for an opinion. I don't need someone to come in and, and redirect and try to shift me from my assignment. Mm -mm. So it, it all of that happens in the night. But joy comes in the morning. Let's continue reading. Verse 17 says, Then said I unto them, Ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. Come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this, for this good work. Now, yes, there was opposition. Yes, there was someone that came to oppose the work. Sabotage. I say sabotage because first, they laughed at them for rebuilding you're going to come across circumstances and situations where people will try to question the work that you know that you're supposed to be doing and once again this is whether it's in ministry whether it's in business and even in your own personal life people will come and question and laugh at you throw rocks and stones your way to try and get you to stop and when that doesn't work then they will act like they want to help you but they're actually trying to confuse the work or set up pitfalls and and snags and and, and hindrances to slow down the process that is a sabotaging spirit that is that people come to sabotage what you're trying to do prime example you have set aside what you want to do for today and someone who says they're coming to help will kind of try and pull you out of what you want to accomplish for that day with things such as you sure you want to do that today oh can't that wait for tomorrow um i think you should do it this way you see but if you came to help i don't need your interjection to hinder me if you're not going to add to me so we must be careful what I am intrigued about when it comes to Nehemiah is this in the night when he got to Jerusalem and he began to survey and look and and he knew what was in his heart to do he already had his assignment when it was time to rebuild which now we're coming into the day he assigned individuals to work according to their ability see when you go through the night and you get the tools and the tutelage that you need when the day comes oh my goodness when the day comes you can appoint and instruct strategically for a good and expected end that's your good and expected end so when you're going through that time and you need to restructure and you need to redirect and 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 you just really need to relook at the vision get an understanding when you need to get those plans together and you're preparing 
and you're building. Get all that you're supposed to get. You're going to experience those times of night. Those times of night can represent times of frustration. Fatigue. Body, mind, and soul. Yes, it does become fatigued. Pace yourself so that you do not get burned out. I'm helping us today. That's my mandate. That's what I'm called to do. Another thing that I love about Nehemiah is he heard about the problem. But he waited until he got there to, to look behind the problem. Before... He began to direct or put pay people in place to do work. Sometimes we hear about a project or a situation and we automatically go into fix it mode without fully surveying what's really at work. I can't fully survey anything based off of what was said. I need to look. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson. I thank you for joining us here via our Wisdom app as well as our radio broadcast with Spryker. You can also check us out via iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, uh, Deezer Addict, a whole host, uh, Radio FM, Reason FM. Uh, I thank you for being a part of our listening audience. And you can also connect with us via Facebook. Our Facebook page is The Balance of Life. Or my personal page is Elder Angel Ferguson Ferguson. I enjoy sharing words of encouragement with you. Today, I just wanted to come by and remind you not to give up. You might be going through a period of darkness of night, which represents frustration, fatigue. In your eyesight, you might not see any progress. Things could appear as if they're stagnant. Nothing is moving. That is a period of night. And it is in the time, it is in those times that individuals normally give up. They normally give up and they walk away. Because they're not seeing the results that they want, that they want to see and in the time frame that they want to see it. But there is a good and expected end for you. During this period of time, listen, go ahead and do what you have to do to get through your frustration. Take a good long nap. Take your time away. Uh, I want to tell you over the past uh, two weeks, I have been uh, going through a period of detoxing my mind. That's right. Throughout the day, but especially at night when I lay down, I don't want to revisit conversations and 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 all of those things that that aggravated me throughout the day. So I've been detoxing my mind and it has been absolutely wonderful. It clears my thoughts. It allows me to focus on creative areas. It allows me to focus on what I need to do to achieve to see the manifestation of what I'm going after. Try it. It's been working wonders for me and I highly recommend it for you. And so in that night when you are going through those times, do what you need to do to become refreshed, renewed, revitalized. Look over the vision. Look over your plans. And once again, I want you to uh, evaluate the experiences that did not fit or work well with your goal in mind. Look at those things. See what changes you need to make. But by all means, do not throw in the towel Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The joy is your refreshing and your renewal and a new outlook, replenishment so that you can move forward. I pray that what we've shared with you today has been food unto your soul and a light unto your path. 
Have a blessed day, everyone. We'll talk to you tomorrow.